I was gonna come on here and do this whole bit where I acted really excited, you know, best movie ever, um, just to kind of trick you guys, but I, I couldn't. Um, I just didn't have the energy for that. Have you ever, when you were younger, gotten in trouble with your parents and instead of getting mad at you, they just said, I'm just really disappointed. That's how I feel right now. Let's talk about Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix is the latest and the last of the Fox X-Men franchise. It releases in the United States on June 7th, 2019 and clocks in at just under two hours. It is rated PG-13 and this is the directorial debut of Simon Kimberg. I had a couple questions going into this film, uh, most notably how different is it with Brian Singer no longer at the helm and the big one, how different is this from X-Men The Last Stand, the third X-Men movie by Brett Ratner, who actually had Simon Kimberg on as a writer for that film. Is this a better retelling than that film? The cast from X-Men Apocalypse does return for this movie. Uh, all of this newer cast, this new class, if you will. Uh, Sophie Turner comes back uh, as Jean Grey in the lead. She's the primary focus for this film. Um, but we have newcomers as well. Uh, Jessica Chastain, most notably, who is a really fantastic actress. Uh, her character, her backstory is somewhat explained. Uh, I will leave that because this is a non-spoiler review. Um, I'll just say that it's a mysterious role. It does tie heavily into the story and for the uh, best understanding of her and why she is so important to this, I highly recommend you read uh, the X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga uh, from the Uncanny X-Men stories by uh, Chris Claremont and, and John Byrne. This movie comes in at a really weird juncture in the X-Men franchise and where it falls in the uh, merger with Disney and Fox, uh, it's supposed to tie up nearly two decades of story. Um, this is a franchise also that really helped give birth to the superhero genre, this cinematic golden age that we're in right now. Uh, it's a franchise that's seen uh, some really amazing highs like Logan uh, and some really low lows like The Last Stand, uh, like Wolverine Origins. Uh, and it's a tale that's woven literally through time, uh, through the story and uh, through the past uh, nearly two decades, it's been 19 years. Uh, and because of that, the story is very convoluted. It's hard to follow. Um, it's very intricate in, in uh, what matters now, uh, what's been reset. It's kind of difficult to unravel it all. Um, like, I'm not really sure for this movie, uh, really where it stands, like, does Last Stand still matter? Uh, I think it got uh, kind of reset by Days of Future Past. Um, but what about, uh, like, for example, X-Men Apocalypse, at the end there's Jean Grey, the same Jean Grey, the same Sophie Turner, and she has the Phoenix Flame. So, and also, how does this movie, which uh, takes place in uh, the early 90s, uh, kind of bring everything full circle back to the first X-Men film, which take place in the early 2000s. You have uh, um, you have James McAvoy who plays Professor Xavier. He has to transition from that in just a few short years to now becoming Patrick Stewart. I just don't get uh, how that all kind of comes together. It's still not quite clear, even though this is supposed to wrap all of that up. So somebody, if you know, or if you have an answer, uh, go ahead and uh, leave me that down in the comments because some of that I, I still just can't wrap my head around. Um, but here we are at the end of the story, uh, retelling what was arguably one of the worst of the franchise with the best of comic stories, which is of course the Dark Phoenix Saga. Um, it's at a time when it really feels like everything's already been told. This is almost like the epilogue to it. Uh, we're at a point where the X-Men have been passed on to the MCU, to Marvel, to Kevin Feige. Um, and this changing cast and this really complicated uh, network of plot points really makes it hard to feel uh, sort of connected to these characters. Uh, a lot of things happen. Um, there's some loss and some tragedy. Um, but I just don't feel uh, those emotional beats that I think that Simon and the cast really want you to feel. Um, Sophie Turner here is really good, uh, and I'll, I'll say this later, but she's one of the highlights for me. She conveys this power, um, elegant, uh, this hot air to her, um, and yet she's like really vulnerable at the same time um, and uh, completely capable of killing. 
Um, Jessica Chastain, her character is really good too. Uh, her motivations are relatable. Um, Cody Smith McPhee, he <laughs> finally has something to do here as Nightcrawler. He gets pretty savage there t towards the end. So he's doing a bit more than just kind of being a vehicle, just kind of bamfing people around and, and teleporting them. So I like that. And I always enjoy uh, James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, their dynamic together. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence comes in again as Mystique, as Raven, and it just feels like she sort of phoned it in very wooden kind of stale performance um, kind of felt like she just had to do it because she had to do it and we do get a lot of the same uh, elements of a certain marvelous captain that we've seen recently um, this story is set in the, in the early 90s as I said mutants are becoming more accepted the president asks them to help out with uh, the space shuttle so they do that um, and uh, they're hit with this uh, cosmic force and Jean becomes a super powerful cosmic being. That's all I'm going to tell you. She gets drunk on this power. There's some really uh, interesting set pieces that take place in places that we haven't seen before. Um, and this really dives into the mind and uh, kind of the emotion and, and the characterization of Jean. And that was one thing that I just uh, really enjoyed for from Sophie Turner in this. Um, however, the time between the action and the, the big set pieces kind of dragged. There was some dialogue that felt forced and awkward and um, and unnatural. These things were maybe look great in a comic book, in a panel, but on screen when the characters are physically talking to each other, it didn't work for me. It really did not work. Um, so to answer my questions from before, uh, yes, it is better than X-Men 3. The lack of Brian Singer is noticeable. Um, however, uh, there is uh, really a beautiful kind of psychedelic CGI, but less of a, a reliance on it. There's more real world here, which is a great thing. It's good. Um, but it is obvious they had to do some reshoots for the end because of that similarity that I mentioned. So that whole third act that they did uh, is a reshoot, and it's really obvious when that starts. It, it really <laughs> feels like a different film almost. Um, you can tell when that, when that footage begins. Um, but overall, this movie kind of feels flat and it fills out for an ending for this really lengthy storied franchise. It's, it's messy, it's bland, there's something that happens with Quicksilver and then it's like, where did he go? I don't know. Um, and it's just kind of generally unsatisfying the way it's all left. I don't feel like this Fox universe wrapped up. I will say that Sophie Turner's performance was my favorite uh, part of this movie. Uh, she is, of course, Sansa Stark in Game of Thrones, so I'll make this parallel. This movie is the Game of Thrones Season 8 of the franchise. And with that, I give Dark Phoenix a 4 out of 10 stars. Once you see it, though, let me know your thoughts and comments. Go ahead and leave me those down in the comment section below. We'll continue the conversation down there. Thank you for watching and listening, my friends, and I will see you in the next video.